What was the most dickish way in which a friend showed you that you're not as close as you thought? Kick back and enjoy the ride. If you dig what you see, hit that subscribe button and share the love for Thread Tonic. Account 1. A close friend of mine, whom I have known since our freshman year, was about to marry his girlfriend of almost a decade. I was really happy for them and said that I was looking forward to seeing them exchange rings. He then explained that his and her families were rather large, and it was already getting pretty expensive. He said they had to make ends meet and that I was not invited. He mentioned that they would have loved to have all their friends around, but the ceremony was just for family. They would have a party later to celebrate with everyone else. Truth be told, it did hurt, but I told him that I understood. Yes, marriages are very expensive, and after all, it is their party. A week later, a common friend showed up and asked if I wanted to join in on a wedding present. I declined, saying I would give them something personal and that I only give presents at parties where I am actually present. He was surprised I was not invited, as many of our mutual friends were. Later, the groom explained that they could not exclude certain friends because they were almost family and had promised long ago to give them roles during the wedding. I let the topic go, but I felt quite hurt when I saw the photos and recognized half of our old clique. From this point on, it only got worse. We used to be co-workers, and he was even my supervisor at one point. Since I moved to another part of the country, he does not answer emails. When I saw him again in February, I had a lovely talk with his wife while he actively avoided me. The usual invite to his birthday party in March was lost in the mail, I guess. The after party never came, by the way. I do not wish him ill and still regard him as a remote friend, given our past. But it is clear that he does not want a closer friendship than that. I do not mind, as there are many people I know who do not want a closer friendship. But I do feel that this was a hurtful move. Account 2. A friend of 12 years called me the night his father committed suicide. I was the only person there that night who was not direct family. I cleaned up the mess left behind by the paramedics and buried his dog that night so the family would not have to experience that as well. I cannot get him to leave World of Warcraft for a single night out of the month and only found out about his recent engagement secondhand. I am not angry at him. I just thought we were closer friends than that. Account 3. I realized we weren't as close as I thought when my friend organized a group outing to a theme park and conveniently forgot to invite me, claiming they thought I wouldn't be interested. Apparently, riding roller coasters and eating cotton candy together isn't their idea of bonding. Guess I'll just enjoy my own company and funnel cake. Account 4. I learned we weren't as close as I thought when my friend asked for my help planning their wedding. Excited to be involved, I spent weeks helping with decorations, organizing seating charts, and offering heartfelt advice. On the big day, I arrived ready to celebrate only to find myself relegated to menial tasks like folding napkins and directing guests to their seats. Meanwhile, their inner circle of friends delivered heartfelt toasts, danced the night away, and seemed to forget I was even there. It was a stark reminder that our friendship was measured not by genuine connection, but by my utility in their grand affair. Account 5. A really close friend of mine posted a long rant about how miserable she was with her life. Being one of her best friends, I left her a message letting her know that I'm always there if she wants to talk or something. Two days later, she answered with, I would rather gouge my own eyes out with a spoon. Fuck off. I asked her if I had done something to piss her off, and she told me, No. My problems are my own. Just fuck off. I have not spoken to her since. Account 6. I had a best friend who had just gone through a bad breakup and needed someone to move into her apartment to help her with rent. My boyfriend and I moved in, and we all had a blast together for a few months. She and my boyfriend were close, but I never suspected anything. I worked six days a week, and they were both unemployed, so they spent a lot of time together. After a while, it was clear she and my boyfriend had some kind of a falling out, because they both started to talk badly about each other when we were alone. It got to the point where we basically had to move out because the vibe in the apartment was pretty sour and I was stuck in the middle. He vehemently denied anything weird went on. They were just friends and then she started to hate him. Soon after we moved out, my boyfriend was diagnosed with lung cancer. 
She was basically the only person other than him that I knew in this city at the time, as I am from the other side of the country. She was my only support, and I called her to let her know what was going on. Her response was that she did not want to deal with it, and she never spoke to me again. TLDR. My ex-best friend may have had an affair with my boyfriend, and I just came to this realization while writing this post. Account 7. I was close to this girl who used to come through the coffee shop where I worked while also working on my multiple undergraduate degrees. I never spent much time with her family, as I was 10 years older than her, and we were just friends. When her dad died suddenly, she asked me to be a pallbearer at his funeral. I was touched, as it was a tremendous honor to be chosen to walk her dad's body to its final resting place. She said I was chosen because I was so important to her. A year or so passed, I graduated and was accepted to the Peace Corps, so I said goodbye. After I got back from the Peace Corps, I reconnected with her. I had problems with internal bleeding since my return and needed surgery. We had been staying in touch via email, and I saw her from time to time at the coffee shop where she worked. I explained my situation in my emails and mentioned that I would need someone to pick me up after surgery and stay with me for 24 hours in case of a post-op infection. I sent her several emails but did not hear back. I got an email from her a day or so before my surgery, asking about my internal bleeding. Instead of helping me, I got a buddy from work to pick me up after surgery. Since he couldn't stay, I spent the night alone in horrible pain, crying and vomiting in the shower. It was one of the loneliest nights of my life. After, she moved to San Francisco. Although I have emailed her a few times, she refuses to reply. I am thinking about her these days because I am bleeding internally again, and this time they found a mass to go with the bleeding. Edit. The internal bleeding is from stones and cysts in my kidneys and a mass in my bladder. The surgery will remove the stones and cysts and biopsy the mass in my bladder. I did not anticipate the number of responses I received, or I would have shared this at the start. It was more about explaining the shame of being unable to find someone to watch over me when I really needed it. Thank you for all your kind replies. Account 8. I had a friend try to take advantage of me because his girlfriend told him to and ended up screwing himself over in the process. I was opening a new restaurant in Florida and brought a friend from up north to help out. He was enthusiastic about everything, worked hard and I thought he was loyal too. But he had some issues. He used to introduce himself by his self-given nickname, Showtime. We were in Florida opening the restaurant. He lived in my house for free and earned a good paycheck with full benefits. Over the first six months, I promoted him from kitchen manager to general manager. He struggled to keep up, but managed to do it. I eventually went back up north for the summer, leaving him in my house for free and letting him drive my new SUV, which he smoked in. About two months later, my father passed away unexpectedly from a rare disease. I decided to sell some of the smaller startup businesses I was involved in to make time to help my family, including this restaurant. I had a buyer, so it should have been a fairly easy process. I closed the restaurant but kept Showtime on for two months with full salary and benefits. About a week in, I had another friend drive down to Florida with a truck to load up some things from the restaurant. He and Showtime then drove it up to me and I flew Showtime back to Florida. He messed up that trip, but that was nothing. Near the end of the two months, I was finalizing the sale. Showtime had just met a new girlfriend who convinced him he was not being treated well by me. He called me and told me that he and his girlfriend had the keys to the restaurant, the combination to the safes, and the alarm codes. If I didn't give him a certain amount of money, they wouldn't return them. I flew down to Florida the next morning, showed up at their apartment, and found out where they were from their landlord. I got them on the phone and explained that if they didn't show up at the restaurant in an hour with my keys and codes, I would get the police involved. Showtime's girlfriend taunted back that the police were already involved. An hour later, she showed up at the restaurant with a sheriff. She got in my face, started screaming, and explained the situation to the officer. The sheriff looked at her confused and then asked me if I would like to have her arrested for attempted extortion. I told the officer I just wanted my keys and codes. The girlfriend handed them over and left, screaming and yelling. I never saw or heard from Showtime again. He lost a friend, a bonus I would have given him, a job recommendation, and his health benefits. He also destroyed my house and left my SUV filthy, both of which I let him use for free for almost a year. Account 9. My family helped my mom's best friend and her family get into Canada. 
My dad went to embassies, was on the phone almost constantly, until they finally got in. They spent the first year living in our home, which wouldn't have been bad if her husband went out to look for a job, or maybe even went out to set up his own fucking bank account or do his own paperwork. The wife was a total bitch. My mom's taking teaching courses and doing a job to support the family, and this lady can't even make herself tea? She can't even cook one meal? She and her husband stay home all day. They can't help whatsoever. Our house is divided into two parts. The downstairs is finished, and we used to rent it out. We had them living there and lost income generated from there as well. Their kids were supposed to stay downstairs, not go upstairs when my sister and I weren't home, and steal our books and toys. They had their own toys and we were happy to share, but stealing, stealing? Their little daughter, while four, beat up my little sister, who was two at the time, for going in her room. I understand that it was a little kid, but the parents didn't care that this happened. I lived with this for a year. The feeling that my home wasn't mine because I'd find their son around my age in my closet, going through my clothes. Having to see my parents deal with supporting another four mouths with a lessened cash inflow. But you know what made it better? When my mom finally let her best friend know she had to move out because her husband finally got a good job and my mom finally convinced someone in a community to rent out a home to her. And this bitch, this stupid selfish bitch says, I expected more from you. My blood boils every time I think of what they did to us. The way they abused us. This woman became a teacher and calls her colleagues racist for not waving to her in the halls. They don't wave to her because she's a cunt. She took a teaching course that my mom did and accused the prof of being racist because she got a C, my mom got an A, and is the same race. Just to clarify, not only was she an idiot, but she wore the ugliest purple lipstick you have ever seen. They finally left our neighborhood after realizing everyone hated them, and they left their garbage in our backyard. They showed up one day while everyone was out and dumped everything back there. Also, they left mold in both our home and the home they rented. The people who they rented their home from only rented it to them. Because they liked my mom enough to. When these people left, they left the house smelling like piss. I'm not kidding. Visiting their house was the nastiest thing ever. I could, and have, gone on for hours about them. And each time, it makes me angry to know that you could kill yourself working for someone but they'll insult you when they should thank you. TLDR, mom's best friend, stays in our home for a year with her lazy-ass husband and cunts of kids. Destroys our home. Expected my mom to do more for her. Account 10. Known some guys for about three years. Then I get invited to a party of one of the guy's girlfriends. I don't know her well, but I accept, as I hadn't been invited to any previously. The party was me and my friends and some girls. I go to sit down with a circle of kids and my friends start to act like they don't know me and ask me to leave. Account 11. High school. Had been hanging out with some friends all year. And on finals week, we would head for someone's house for lunch every day as soon as everyone was done with morning exams. Second day of finals, we're walking up the hill towards the cars when one of my friends turns to me and says, Dude, I gotta talk to you. We don't want you to come with us. Other guy is really nerdy and annoying, and he irritates everyone. Since he goes wherever you go, we don't want you to come along. Hope you understand. Sorry. And off they went to lunch, leaving me standing open-mouthed in the parking lot. That's one of those moments my subconscious likes to dredge up when I'm sitting at a red light, feeling good about myself. A real ego smasher. Account 12. I was at a party with a group of friends that I had known for about six or so years. It was an outdoor party, and I was off talking with a guy I know on the far side of the large backyard we were in. Unbeknownst to me, my boyfriend at the time had been chugging a large bottle of wine, got a bit too drunk, and expressed some sentiment of jealousy about me talking to my guy friend in the vicinity of two other guys in the group of friends. So there I am. Hanging out, having a jolly carefree time, when I hear someone yell from across the field, I'm hanging out in, hey, whatcha doing? To which I playfully reply, hunting rabbits. Okay. After all, up until this point, we had all been having a goofy fun time yelling all kinds of silly stuff. Suddenly I see these two guys walking really fast through the field towards me and my buddy. Keep in mind, these are two people that I had thought to be friends of mine and had considered them so for many years at this point. 
When they get about halfway across the field, I hear them start yelling, Get the fuck off my property! I thought they were joking around until they get closer and start screaming in both our faces that we need to get the fuck off their property right now. I am beyond bewildered and confused and start trying to talk to them to figure out what was going on or why they were inexplicably angry. One of the dudes is immediately trying to kick the ass of the guy I am with, who happened to be extremely skinny and could have been easily pounded into oblivion by this fellow. Still without having any clue what is going on, I find myself in the position of protecting my friend from getting beat to hell by physically standing between this guy and him screaming to know what the hell was going on and why they were doing this. I am a rather petite female. They continue to scream some of the most hateful words I have ever heard from someone in my face and then take me by the arm and physically pull me across the field. The field had a small barbed wire fence in the middle that you have to step over to get to the other side. They pulled me through the barbed wire fence, creating several deep gouges up to 14 inches long on my exposed legs. I was wearing shorts. They physically pushed me onto the ground in their driveway and with a final get the fuck out, walked away back to the party. I was left standing there crying, bleeding, shaking, and beyond confused as to why or what exactly just happened. All I found out later was that my drunk boyfriend made a slight comment about being jealous of the guy I was talking to. And apparently the two were also drunk and inexplicably flipped their lids. Needless to say, I never set foot anywhere near those psychotic assholes again. Edit. One of the guys I saw about a year later, and he actually came up to me at a bar, tried to buy me a shot, and said something along the lines of, I was really drunk. Shit happens. You understand, right? No. I think not. I turned down his gesture, did not say a word, and left. Account 13. I quit drinking. Now people I considered family two years ago are completely gone from my life. Some of these were people I had known for more than seven years and some for twice that. What's funny was most of them had suggested through the years that I should get some help. Your drinking pals don't really want you to quit. Not ever. Something I did learn, though. If you work regularly, pay your bills, save and spend wisely. You don't have to worry about friends. Friends will happen. Account 14. I'd been best friends with this girl for about 13 years. I took a year off from college to study in Israel. Her 21st birthday was coming up, and she would send me Facebook messages about how I should come to her birthday, and it would not be fun unless I was there. I bought a plane ticket and told my friend who was planning the party that I was going to be there and it should be a surprise. I was on a plane for 14 hours, then had to drive another six so I could be at this party for my best friend. I saw her for about an hour before she had to take care of school stuff. She left with her BF and 15 other people to go to a house party. I got a message from her three weeks later asking when I was going back. I was only in town five days. I have not talked to her since. Account 15. Girl I was besties with for nearly 10 years. I kind of knew that she was one of those emotionally needy types, but just didn't really think it would end up aimed at me, I guess. She got laid off from her job around the same time my husband's annual checkup indicated possible prostate cancer. I posted on my journal about my worries and fears for him. Friend replies to my post with a long public comment tearing me several new assholes for being so selfish and self-absorbed and how I only talk about me on my journal and I'm not being there for her when she's going through the hell of being laid off. I lose my shit and stop speaking to her. Husband turns out not to have cancer. About a year later, I get an email from her confessing that she realizes how insensitive and inappropriate her reaction was. We cautiously take up being friendly with one another again. A few months down the road, her brother-in-law's GF is pregnant, and they make a painful decision to give the baby up for adoption for various family reasons. She posts on her own journal boasting about how she tore the GF several new assholes because her and her husband have been trying to get pregnant for a few months. And the GF was so selfish and self-absorbed that she made these arrangements for her child's adoption without first consulting friend and friend's husband to see if they'd like to adopt the child themselves. After a few more incidents like this, I just kind of realized this woman was not the person I thought she was, and I distanced myself. When she realized what was going on, she lambasted me verbally and disconnected from the friendship. Thank God. Account 1. 
not me, but two of my best friends. One friend will call Alan, borrowed my other friend Kenneth's car, for a family emergency on two occasions. It turns out those family emergencies consisted of Alan driving six hours to cheat on Kenneth by hooking up with Kenneth's girlfriend at another college. Account 2. Raped my dog. Edit, downvote me all you want, but it's true. I asked him to take care of my dog for a week while I was abroad. When I came back, he told me my dog wasn't feeling well and had bloody stools and wasn't eating. I took my dog to the vet, who found severe tears around the rectum. I had no proof, but at the very least, he inserted something. I stopped talking to him and told no one until last May when I got drunk and shared the story. Now everyone knows, and his roommate came forward saying he found bestiality on his computer. R.I.P. Cash. Fucking car took his life. P.S. Cash is the name of my dog. Account 3. My childhood best friend has been telling everyone that I raped her out of the blue. For 12 years, she's been spreading this false story around our hometown. Edit. This didn't actually happen to me. It happened to another Redditor. Thanks for the karma. Hopefully, she'll stop messaging me. Account 4. I'm going to sound half my age for a few paragraphs, but like you, jabber walkie, I need it out of my system. It really isn't a big deal in the scheme of things, and I know bitches will be bitches. I'm in a sorority, not a social sorority, but we do have mandatory social events. I like planning stuff with the girls outside these events because mandatory hangout time isn't as fun as optional hangout time. Generally, my events were successful, and it became a tradition to go to a local coffee place and play board games and gossip. One day, no one showed up. I texted a few girls and found out that my bestie had planned an outing at her apartment without inviting me. When I went over, I walked in on her talking about how full of myself I am and how she can't believe people fall for how fake I am. It felt like a scene from a movie. Nothing that Trees and a few Danny Boyle movies couldn't fix, but I felt really shitty and questioned a lot of friendships that night. TLDR, Sorostitute Bestie didn't invite me to girl time, so I got high and watched Sunshine. Bitches suck. Account 5. I was best friends with a guy throughout middle and high school. We did everything together, from theater to speech and debate. And I always gave him rides. If I had to choose one person to stay in touch with from high school, it would have been him. A few weeks into freshman year of college, I noticed he unfriended me on Facebook. After texting, messaging, and calling, he finally texted back, saying, I don't want to be friends anymore. I replied, I don't understand. But if that's what you want, fine. We barely spoke since. At high school speech and debate competitions, we only exchanged brief greetings. He spread rumors that I overreacted, claiming he tried to convince me it was a joke. I lost friends over this. It has been two years and people still bring it up, upsetting me each time. TLDR, don't befriend douche nuggets. Account 6. I had a miscarriage at six months. It was his child. He didn't visit me at the hospital, but let me stay in his room for two days to cope. He never talked about it and kicked me out after two days because it was too much like we were dating. I try not to speak with him often. Edit. He didn't come to my hospital room at my request so that he wouldn't have to look at our dead son. I don't think he was prepared for something like that. Account 7. I was sent abroad for a job I hated. I confided in a friend from university who convinced me to quit and move back to my home country to live in his town. He emphasized how cool it would be to party together again. One of my fears was having difficulties establishing a new social circle in a town where I only knew him. He assured me he'd introduce me to his circle. After weeks of debating, I quit the job and moved. I've lived in the new city for over a year and have seen him twice once to help him pick out a present for his new girlfriend and once to loan him my DSLR camera, which he returned without the SD card. He never invited me to hang out with his friends. Account 8. I know I'm going to sound whiny, but it really did hurt. I was a junior in university. The two years prior were very depressing. I sucked at being a freshman and did not go out at all. I was so socially inept that I didn't talk to anyone, and so on. Fast forward to junior year, I became very anxious and stressed. I failed all of my classes and withdrew from school. In my mind, it was the end. I did not know what to do. I've never felt so aimless. I came home and talked to the one person I still kept in touch with from high school. I told him how I felt at university and that it just wasn't working out. 
that I might continue at a state university, but I am not sure at all. He listened, and I thought it was going all right. He was the only person I told. A few weeks later, I talked to a mutual friend of ours who I shared a community college class with. I took GE classes at CC in the interim. She asked me about my situation, and I confessed and told her. I asked her how she knew. Well, my friend called to confirm to mutual friends it was on speaker, according to her, that I dropped out of university and am now in community college. She told me that they were laughing the entire time. I've never felt such a violation of trust. He was the only person apart from my parents that I looked to for support. Instead, he embarrassed me. Up to that point, I considered him my best friend. TLDR. I dropped out of university, looked to my best friend for support, and he followed by breaking our confidence and revealing this to mutual friends. I felt embarrassed and worthless. Till. If you're going to look for support, especially for depression or personality disorders, look to a parent and or a medical professional only. Right now, I am doing pretty well in my community college classes, hoping it will help the readmission process to my former university to complete my degree in civil engineering. I'm starting an internship next week at a city engineering department as well. I am grateful that things are finally working out. I feel great. TLDR 2. Everything's coming up, Millhouse. Account 9. I had been friends with this guy since the second grade and our families were pretty close. We are 23 now and I hate his guts. A few years ago, he got a girlfriend and proceeded to cut off all communication with his friends. He ignored calls and texts for months. I finally just gave up on him, thinking that the girlfriend wanted him all to herself. It turns out she wanted him to hang out with all of his other friends, but he just ignored us. A few months later, my mom got sick and they told us she had a 50-50 chance of surviving. I called, texted, and emailed him, really needing my friend at the time. He told me he needed to work in the morning. It was 7 p.m. and he worked at 10 a.m. and couldn't hang out with me. In my moment of need, when I needed him the most, he chose to sleep instead. Fuck him! Account 10. One of my closest friends likes to drink and occasionally reaches his dark place. He struggles with depression and claims his outbursts are from his own self-loathing. Outbursts are him saying things to deliberately hurt me regarding my personality, past relationships, current friendships, etc. I have pretty thick skin, but he is remarkably intelligent and insightful and can cause the metaphorical stab to the heart in a sentence. An example would be, how's X? Where X was a very close friend I admitted feelings for and haven't spoken to since. TLDR, friend highlights my biggest insecurities when drunk. Account 11. My best friend growing up died in a horrible car accident five years ago. The day of the accident, she was supposed to ride with me. Instead, she chose to drive on her own. I felt fucking guilty as fuck for five goddamn years. I've accepted that it wasn't my fault and that she was a horrible driver. There's still the what ifs. There were days where I wished I had traded places with her or done something different to change what happened. I spent five years feeling so bad about everything that had happened and missed the fuck out of her. It really messed me up. I'm never going to get a friend like that ever again, and it really sucks. Then recently, someone told me about her super secret blog entries and gave me the password and said to read it. Apparently, she'd had me filtered out for the bad stuff. I was able to read everything else before using my username. Most of it was her shit-talking me and saying how much I suck and that she had no best friends. It was really hurtful to read, and I'm trying to wrap my mind around it. Should I be pissed at my dead friend or just leave it be? I don't know. ETA, it really surprised me. I had no idea. What set her off was that she thought that I'd lied about being sexually assaulted at a party to get attention. Which is not true. I had naturally told her and my boyfriend at the time. Don't see how that's an attention grab. Yet she never mentioned this to me. Instead, there's a blog post with her trying to get people to rally against me. Ouch. Also, I've been drinking and am forgetting the important shit. Sorry for the edits. Account 12. Hawked my camcorder for drugs. I used to hang out with a bad crowd. However, I was good friends with a couple of them. About a month after I met them, I realized one of them, Jamie, was my best friend from my childhood. It took me so long to realize it because I was five when he moved. 
Everything was good, just the usual stupid teenage shit. Well, my mom didn't like the crowd I hung out with and actually filed a court order to keep me away from them. About two weeks after this happened, I finally convinced my mom to let me go over to Jamie's house to get back some of my stuff that I had over there. Most of the stuff was CDs, a couple of things of clothes, and a camcorder. The story behind that was my mom got me into a film school thing during the previous summer and had been so impressed with my work that my parents pulled together their practically non-existent money to buy me a camcorder. Well, Jamie wouldn't answer his door or his phone, so I went to another friend's house to see if I could figure out where my stuff was. Sure enough, he had told me that he pawned it off for 40, it was bought for 400, and spent it all on pot. They had been pretty good friends to me until they pulled that shit. I was fucking crushed about it because my parents worked so hard to get that for me, and my friends sold it off. No pawn shop I checked at had it, and Jamie refused to talk to me because he knew I would have beaten the shit out of him, so I had to let it go. Account 13. The first day of sixth grade, I met Chris. We slowly grew to be great friends in school. And finally, toward the end of the year, we started hanging out outside of school. And when the year ended, we even hung out a bunch of times over the summer. I even went to the water park with his family once. Then the first day of seventh grade, I finally saw him at lunch, and he was sitting at the popular rich kids table. I remember walking up to him all eager and saying hi, and he basically made fun of me and told everyone how poor I was to make his new friends laugh. I never felt so hurt, and we quickly became enemies. It's okay, though, because in high school, his dad took a job offer in Burlington, and he had to move to rural Vermont. Karma's a bitch! Account 14 when my parents got divorced in the mid-80s, it was still very unusual in my country. Especially since my mother demanded the divorce after my scumbag dad had been cheating. My mom used to be socially very active and always had excellent dinner parties that were famous in our small town. My mom is the kind that will fight for what is hers. But she's not someone to badmouth people or to bicker if someone bitches about her. And of course, she's old school and was still shocked that the love of her life treated her so badly, so the time of the divorce was a huge hit to her self-esteem. Especially when my dad went around and slowly but surely made sure that he destroyed anything that made her happy, even though he wasn't living in the city, but about an hour away. First, my mom was asked to leave the golf club that she had been a member of for 10 years and had been going to every single day, then the tennis club, and then she wasn't invited anymore to dinner parties. The reasoning she was given? So there wouldn't be any drama when my dad went there with his new girlfriend. Oddly enough, my dad never went to the golf club or tennis club and was just a member to be able to say so. Also, he considered the townspeople as small-minded and stupid and rather hung out with the city people. After my dad was finished bad-mouthing my mother, all my mother's girlfriends looked down on her. Nobody would talk to her on market days or in the shops. I vividly remember groups of women chatting excitedly whenever we walked past them. My mom, however, is a fighter, and she ignored the snobs and made new friends who were outsiders, too. Mainly Arab women and other non-European women. Of course, that was reason for more talk because that was even more unconventional than a divorce. Through her new friendships, she learned to speak fluent Italian, basic Arabic, and learned to cook exotic Middle Eastern and Indian dishes like a pro. That was all before the fusion cooking hype on TV, and really opened her mind to new cultures. Roughly 30 years later, many other women that snobbed her got divorced, mainly because their husbands left them after the kids were old enough. And they all went straight to my mom for advice. Instead of snubbing them... She took them in with her arms wide open, consulted them in their grief, and helped them out to fight for a financial settlement as well as she could. Not once did she point fingers. On my mom's birthday last year, I overheard a former snob woman say that she truly envies my mom for having had the guts to demand an early divorce from her asshole husband. She herself would still wait every night with the fist under her apron for her asshole husband to finally eat worms so she could be financially independent and start living a life. TLDR, during my parents' divorce, my mom got dropped by all of her friends. She made new and better friends, and later the ones that dropped her came back for advice when they got divorced. Account 15. 
My then best friend stopped talking to me out of nowhere because I started going through some hard times in my life. Bankruptcy, my daughter and I were both very sick. My husband got laid off. She stopped returning my calls and texts and wouldn't even respond to me on Facebook because she was hanging out with her boyfriend and she didn't want to hear depressing things. TLDR. When I needed a friend the most, she decided her boyfriend was more important. Account 1. I have had one friend from elementary to middle school and a friend I met in high school ditch me simply by ignoring me. I do have social anxiety, well, so I am told, and have trouble relating to people in most cases. The one from high school I used to see pretty often, go over his house for bonfires and so on. He had a rocky problem with his girlfriend, classic girlfriend runs off with best friend situation, and we would talk, watch old movies, and just go drive around aimlessly. He decided he was going to go to Germany a year ago for school, gave me a huge folder of past instant messages where we had talked for hours about random crap that he had saved, gave it to me. We talked over Skype a few times, saw him once or twice when he got back. Then he just stopped talking to me. Then he stopped responding to me. Now he is just another name on my Facebook list. No idea why he decided he was sick of me, but suffice it to say, it doesn't help that friends seem to get tired of me and ditch me after years of knowing each other. It makes me wonder what's wrong with me. Sometimes I wish people would at least tell me why they just fall off the face of the earth. It makes you paranoid in my experience, and I feel like I can't maintain relationships with people since they have a habit of just disappearing. And in retrospect, you feel like a fool for thinking they were a friend at all. Account 2. I was dating this guy once. At first, he was always really sweet, but the more comfortable with me he got, the more passive-aggressive he became. He started insulting me in a way that sounds like a compliment. I like your breasts better in a bra. Your ass is so hot, if you didn't have one, I'd hardly find you attractive. And he kept comparing me to his ex. Also, he always asked me to come to these car shows with him, but not once did he ever want to do something I really enjoyed. Clearly, we weren't made to be. So I broke up with him and I told him why. In his mind, he didn't do anything wrong and I must be grasping straws to come up with any old excuse to break up with him. This is when he decided to accuse a mutual friend of ours that we were screwing around. This is a retarded accusation. We were together constantly and the week before we broke up, I was just distraught from his latest string of insults and comparisons. I don't know when he thought I could have the time or the desire to seek out a third party. And imagine how mutual friend felt. This was literally out of the fucking blue. They were in work groups for school and all of a sudden his buddy just stops talking to him because of some baseless bro code violation accusation. It was in fact so bizarre that our mutual friends pretty much took one big WTF dude step away from him. Well, mutual friend didn't want to be friends with me anymore because he was afraid if we were seen hanging out, people would think the accusations were true. As you can imagine, this pissed me the fuck off. What does he have your house bugged? So I visited anyways. Played video games, watched movies, hung out with him, and his two boss roommates and all the mutual friends who drifted in and out. We've been dating for three years. I move into his house in a couple of weeks. Account 3. Most lately, it's my friend who always comes to cry on my shoulder. I always watch her son when the babysitter falls through or the dad is too lazy to put down the video games, etc. Has mentioned at least three times in my presence she's getting married. But I have yet to be invited, though I know the invitations have been sent out. I didn't even mention I wouldn't have known she was engaged if she hadn't brought up the topic of a wedding and her wedding dress getting screwed up. Needless to say, I'm busy for the next few years when she wants a babysitter again. Account 4. He fucked my girlfriend when she was passed out drunk in our house. So, I smashed his fucking face in. Also, he was charged with and convicted for rape. And yes, I kicked the shit out of him the next time I saw him after he got out. Also, to top it off, I showed up at both of his parents' workplaces and passed around documentation that their son was a convicted rapist. Account 5. My cousin and I were very close as young kids and still kept in touch as adults. An invitation came in the mail for my parents to her wedding, but I was not included. I spoke to my aunt, not her mother, about my disappointment in not being invited. My mother called her mother and asked if I had been invited. My aunt told her that they were keeping the wedding small and no cousins were being invited. I am her only cousin in the same state. My aunt, not her mother, 
calls and says that she can't attend because she lives too far away and financial reasons and recommends that I take her place. Still no invite. My parents come back from the wedding telling me that the table they sat at were four of his cousins and two of her cousins from the other side, not to mention their old neighbor from when we were ten who hasn't seen my cousin since she they moved, who said blood is thicker than water. Account six. God, this'll get buried. But I've never exactly ever been anyone's best friend. I've been variations of a runner-up in that department, but I did have a pretty mutual best friend until he got a girlfriend and she turned him against me, and things have never been the same since. Yeah, sounds like something straight out of fucking high school drama TV. I hate it as much as you. We'd been friends for all of middle school through high school, then senior year was when his girlfriend messed things up. She'd been a really good friend of mine, too, and we often talked. Then one time she decided that I wanted to take her from him, or some bullshit like that I really didn't, and told him. So one morning I'm giving him a ride to school, and he gets in the car and starts screaming at me, talking about how he knew that I told her name all this stuff and whatnot. I was flabbergasted. We'd been friends for five years, he'd been dating her for five months, and he trusted what she said over me without even wanting to hear my side of the story. Nice. The best part was after his rant, he said, I'm not trying to be a dick, I'm just saying. Obviously, I just sat there and ignored it all. Happy ending, though. A couple years later, our friendship's back in good shape. Water under the bridge, etc. Even though it's not exactly like before. On a different note, all my other friends I thought I had, I find slowly drifting away into their own lives, past memories being muddled in the midst of new paths taken. Nobody really cares as much as I do about all of it, nothing's really mutual, really depresses me sometimes. TLDR, don't ever tell anybody anything. If you do, you start missing everybody. Account 7. A guy I considered my best friend silently accepted that his girlfriend, my ex, was slandering me behind my back to my girlfriend. When I finally confronted her about it, admittedly pretty angry, they responded by telling me I wasn't welcome in their home anymore. And this was a guy I commuted with every day and spent a lot of time with at their place, playing with his children and so on. He cut all ties with everyone we both knew and told my girlfriend that she was the reason he couldn't see me and his other friends anymore. Any attempt to contact him to sort things out has been in vain. Then one day I found out my girlfriend had been fooling around with at least three other guys, two of them online, very intensely. I broke it off and told her that if the lies continued, she would have 20 minutes to pack all her stuff. Otherwise, I would let her find a new place before I kicked her out. To my surprise, they took her back in. The woman they just blame for everything is living with them right now until she finds a new place. My best friend won't even talk to me because of her, but apparently has no problem offering her shelter. And what's more, I have talked to my ex a couple of times and she even says she sometimes has to defend me when they talk about me. Fuck those people! Fuck them! Account 8. I have so many of these stories that I don't know where to begin. I guess I just have a poor personality. Here's an easy one. I called a friend of mine one night to see what he was up to. He said that everyone, about 12 people, were going to the movies. It started in 15 minutes, but I should meet them there. I bought my ticket and headed into the theater which was packed. The house lights were still on and the previews hadn't started playing yet, so I called my friend but got no answer. Whatever, I'll sit in the back and try to call later. Five minutes pass and I try again, no answer. So, I'm looking in the crowd and I see someone using their cell phone as a flashlight, like they were trying to signal someone. I thought it was my friend, so I approached. It turns out that it was the person behind my group who was kind enough to signal me. I overheard my friends talking negatively about me when I got close. I didn't want to leave because, hell, movie tickets are expensive, so I sat down and watched the movie away from my friends. After the movie, they wouldn't even acknowledge me. That's what friends are for. Account 9. Living well is the best revenge. I have had what I considered friends let me know they found the thought of my company appalling. It hurts a lot. I have found it helps with the pain to turn that hurt and frustration into fuel to improve the life you do have. Hit the gym, start a business, learn a foreign language, or write the next great American novel. It's every person's duty to improve themselves. If others don't realize that you are of quality and capable of recognizable accomplishments, 
then perhaps in hindsight, you are better off without those people in your life. They may have, in future reflection, actually done you a favor. Account 10, one of the closest friends I have ever had, moved with me across four states, bringing his girlfriend. And we all got an apartment with my girlfriend. I thought my life was perfect with my best friend and my girl and being out and on our own. The guy took months to get a job, and I helped him out until then with a lower share of the rent, because only his girlfriend was working, even though I had rented a larger apartment than planned for them. As soon as he gets a job, they move out, unannounced, skipping out on their share of the rent. This was only the start of how he treated me poorly. I met this guy, Chris, my first year of college, and we were immediately really good friends. We were never really single at the same time, so there was never anything romantic between us. He meets this girl, Victoria, tells me about how much he likes her, and I finally convince him to ask her out he wasn't great with girls. He wasn't great with girls. They start dating, she and I are friends, everything's great. I go abroad the next semester and he pops the question to her. They have been dating for less than a year at this point, keep in mind. I'm happy for him, although a little bummed that he didn't tell me he was going to propose. We were best friends after all. The girl is all excited, wants me to be in the wedding party. Actually, they argued over whose side of the wedding I would be on, whether I'd be the best woe man or maid of honor. I come back. Chris and I go back to being best friends. I start noticing that Victoria is getting difficult about everything. Wedding plans, school, work. She worked a whole eight hours week. Her life was tough. Chris hanging out with me. Chris ignores it. Victoria and I were in a club together, both as officers. I was the president, she was secretary. One day, completely out of the blue, she emails me and says, I'm way too busy to do this club, I quit. Weird, but all right. Chris and I keep hanging out. But she starts calling him and complaining about random things while we hang out. Hanging out with Chris becomes less fun. I go home for winter break one semester, come back. Chris won't respond to any of my messages. Oh, and Victoria deletes and blocks me from Facebook. Whatever, right? Chris still won't respond to my messages. It's been four or five months since I've heard from him at this point. I delete him finally, but send him a really calm, polite message asking what happened to our friendship. His response? Blocks me. So I go on Twitter and write a vague tweet about how people should have lives outside of their significant other. Didn't say names or anything. A day or two later, I get a barrage of text messages from Chris saying how I've disrespected him and Victoria by slandering them all over the internet. He also said I would learn my lesson for thinking I could disrespect him with no consequences. Uh, what? I delete the tweet and try to talk to him, and he apologizes for freaking out, says we'll talk when he calms down. Been three months, haven't heard from him. My guess is that his psycho fiancé just got jealous and wouldn't let him hang out with me anymore, since she had done that with basically all of his friends in the past. We have one mutual friend left, his only friend at this point, and when she asks what happened with him and me, his only reply is, well, it has nothing to do with Victoria even though she probably thinks that. Well then, sorry, it's not as big of a deal as saving his life or something, but it was pretty recent and still kind of hurts. Thanks to anyone who read that. TLDR, don't stick your dick in crazy. Account 12. We had all been friends throughout high school, and I thought after leaving for college, we were still cool. We all still hung out since we all lived close by. Only one of the people in the group wasn't too close with me because of bad vibes between us. Well, we had always talked about going camping and come to find out the summer I heard everyone was too busy. Turned out to be that for some reason, I just wasn't invited to our camping trip. I told my friend that I was really hurt that I hadn't been invited, and he said that they didn't want me to bring my then douchey boyfriend. I understood. Now this year, I've been closer than ever with them and have an awesome boyfriend they all love, only to find that once again I wasn't invited. Lame! Account 13. Shit. I feel like this thread is the story of my life. I feel like I'm a nice guy, and I always try to be friendly and welcoming to whoever I meet. I never let myself get a bad first impression of people and try my best never to judge a person. I don't know what it is, though, but for some reason, people always just end up not liking me. Not to say that they dislike me, but are always at least indifferent. At first, 
I thought that maybe someone had just spread a nasty rumor or something around, but I have no idea. Maybe it's just like how awkward people can't tell that they're awkward or whatever, but I just don't know what it is about me that turns people away. Forever alone. Sub. Account 14. I had a similar experience with a friend. We were close, but he started avoiding hanging out. Eventually, he was having a big party for his birthday. Sounds a little childish, but whatever. I was out of town, but made an effort to get back early so I could be there. When I tried to call him and figure out what the plan was, he talked in circles without actually mentioning it or inviting me anywhere. Finally, after some leading questions, he said once they headed out, he'd let me know. I didn't hear from him for the rest of the night. Two days later, I saw him at work and he went on and on about his night and hooking up with some chick, etc. I was pretty pissed, and it was the moment it really clicked that we weren't the friends I thought we were. Since then, I don't really ever try to hang out with him, and he doesn't ever really call me. We're amicable if we work together, but it's awkward as hell. Account 15. My friend openly made fun of a condition I used to have, still kinda do, but it's not as serious, where my head rapidly jerks backwards and forwards and in some cases knocked me out due to stress. He did it in front of our friends, and I was mortified. Account 1. Okay. Well, I'll admit I haven't posted on Reddit much. Only once before, as I remember, and I created an account after lurking for quite some time. But this topic kind of hits home for me. There are three times in my life that this topic makes me remember. So I'll start from the earliest. During freshman year, I began to reconnect with a friend who I had not really hung around with since middle school. The times that we did hang out, we had sleepovers, hung out at each other's houses, and overall just spent a fair amount of time together. We were both, for the most part, antisocial kids, and we only really connected with each other because of this. But over time, due to different club activities, we grew apart and stopped talking altogether before high school. By sophomore year, I had finally begun to recover from what I like to refer to as my own personal hell on earth. That was middle school. Yeah, I didn't mention it before, but due to bullying, I was severely depressed and considered suicide many times during middle school. Thank God I had the support of my parents and brother. Right around this time, I was also beginning to reconnect with my friend, and he had become far more social than I, and to a degree, I felt like I could make a few friends again with his help. One day, during our biology class, we were talking in a small group with his friends, and one of them mentioned that we had begun to become close friends as of late. He nearly slaughtered me with his response. Nah, we're not friends, more like acquaintances. It doesn't sound bad, but to my younger self, who was finally regaining confidence in making a few friends, it was like driving a stake right through my heart. I managed to maintain a poker face and give a shrug at his response, but inside, I was ready to die. This brings me to the second time in my life. But this time, I was the one hurting someone else. I was about a semester into my new high school junior year. I had devoted myself to being more social here and almost immediately made a fairly good friend. I was also on the verge of talking to the coolish kids who seemed to know everyone and whom I wanted to be friends with. Of course, my first friend was more of the loser type and was closer to what I was like during middle school and freshman year, socially awkward, and picked on more than anyone else. We were sitting in physics class having our little conversation group, when in comes the question. So you've been getting pretty close to Mike lately. Are you two friends now? And of course, what did I blurt out? Nah, we're more acquaintances. Immediately, I had a flashback to my freshman year, and I have regretted my answer ever since. Of course, it was also due to this answer that I went home that day and decided, fuck the cool kids. I know where I belong and want to be. I ended up becoming fantastically close friends with Mike until we graduated. We had a bit of a ritual where nearly every day we would go to either Arby's, Wendy's, or McDonald's and then to one of our houses to hang out. Finally, event number three involving Mike. Upon graduation from high school, we went our separate ways to a degree. I went away to school while he remained at home and went to a local college. During winter break, we caught up and I found out that he had landed himself a solid girlfriend, but had also dropped out of college. Regrettably, I voiced my opinions on the matter, but I knew it was his decision and he hated school anyway. 
To try and remain in his life, I decided that I wanted to meet his girlfriend and get to know her. He ended up taking me to where she worked since she had issues with scheduling. We showed up at a white castle next to a gas station at 10 p.m. at night. I thought, whatever gets the bills paid gotta respect someone for sticking with what they can get for the time being. We walked in and I started looking at the girls working. Mike was trying to get me to guess who she was and he had said previously that I would not personally find her attractive. My choices were a very cute girl who looked too young, a woman in her 40s, an incredibly obese girl, and a sort of average looking, slightly overweight girl. So, I chose the last option. He corrected me and pointed to the incredibly obese girl, much to my surprise. In the end, I was not able to talk to her because she was obviously working and it seemed reasonably busy. So we got out of their way and hung out a little more before I went back home. I repeatedly tried to set up meetings. And long story short, she ended up hating me for no reason other than wanting to get to know her and meet her, as well as removing me from his Facebook, phone, and forbidding him from meeting with me. I found out last summer when talking to him that he nearly married her and never once told me about it or considered inviting me despite me being the only person who has continually tried to continue contact with him and was his best friend in high school. This time, I have grown up significantly and was going into my junior year of college. I was not depressed. I was pissed. I have been considering asking Reddit for help on how to get rid of the girlfriend. The story is much longer, but this post is already long enough as it is, and I have not found a suitable subreddit yet. TLDR Friend once snubbed me freshman year of high school. I did the exact same thing to Mike in junior year, regretted it, and became amazingly close friends with him. This same Mike got a girlfriend, dropped out of college, let her control him and be separated from me, and almost got married without even letting me know. As a note, his parents and sister all liked me, and every time I have gone to his old place, not sure if he lives there at the moment, they have done everything they can to help me in any way I asked. This usually just meant giving me the address of where he is living and his current phone number, as well as a brief summary of his situation. Account 2. Man. This has me paranoid. I'm planning our wedding now and money is tight. There are some heavy edits for the guest list, both for friends and family. I mean, no offense, really. But some of the edits are people who are part of a larger group. They're going to hate me forever, I guess. Account 3. I had a close lady friend for a couple of years. Yada, yada, yada. We both finally came out and admitted we liked each other as more than friends. I asked her to prom. She denied because her boyfriend the previous year had cheated on her on prom night. I'm just going to go out to dinner with some girlfriends. I asked a couple more times and got the same answer. One day, she came up in conversation with a mutual acquaintance. Oh, yeah. The girl going to prom with so-and-so, right? No, you must be mistaken. She's not going to prom this year. Come to find out, she was actually going to prom with some other dude. It broke my fucking heart. That was eight years ago now, and I still hate thinking about it. I'm such a pussy. Account four. Long story short, my best friend got pregnant with my ex-boyfriend and attempted to one, lie about being pregnant. But that didn't work out too well after six months. And then two, lie about who the dad was. We were best friends since eighth grade. We were 17 when this all happened. Haven't talked to her since her kid was born. I felt like I could have been on Jerry Springer or Maury. It was ridiculous and embarrassing. Account five. Sorry guys, I have to counter all the sadness in this thread with some good vibes. When I was growing up, I had a lot of trouble making friends. I was always the outcast, fat, nerdy kid. Everybody made fun of me, even the people who said they were my friends. It didn't help that up until high school, I moved approximately once a year and switched schools many times. As you might expect, this played a big part in my becoming socially awkward and anxious. Then, in my first year of college, I joined a fraternity and got a taste of what real friends are like. I had some great times and then, for reasons that don't need to be voiced, I moved to Kentucky, where I spent a year or so out of school. I sorely missed being back home and tried to keep in relatively frequent contact with my brothers. They responded for a while, but contact became infrequent and finally stopped as they left school, got married, and moved on with their lives. 
I felt alone again. Now, three years after getting back into school and moving through shitty friend after shitty friend, I've finally become active in a local hacker space, have a job that I absolutely love as a software developer at my university, and have found the best friend I've ever had in a guy I met through the space and who got hired at the same time I did. He does me much kindness, so much so that I feel like I'm taking advantage of him, but most of the time he won't let me repay him. Mike D, if you're stalking me, I love you, man. No homo. Account six. My roommate freshman year and I got along pretty well. And one evening, she told me that she was going to a friend of hers choir concert. I went along and they invited me out to dinner with them afterwards. While there, they were shit-talking the friend's roommate, Katie, who I was close with. I said something to the effect of, ha ha, well at least I don't talk about roommate like this with Katie. Nervous laughter ensued from my roommate and her friend. I shook it off, thinking they just didn't know how to respond to the comment, as they were both kind of socially awkward. The next weekend, I drank for the first time in my life and had an absolutely horrible experience. I had my headphones on that Sunday afternoon, and she thought I couldn't hear her, but she called me an annoying, fake, slacker slut to her friend from home. Account 7. When I was in elementary school, around 7 years old, the teacher set us an art assignment where we had to do a portrait of our best friend in the class. My best friend was Neil, and we'd spend all recess and after schools together, etc. We couldn't show our portraits until the rest of the class had finished, which built up the excitement of it all. When it finally came time to reveal our portraits one by one, it turns out he drew another guy in our class, who also drew him. I remember sneaking out of my classroom to throw it out and pretending like an idiot that I'd lost it while going to the restroom. And then I went home and cried. I cried a lot as an awkward child. I think from then on, I've been pretty wary of ever calling someone a best friend, always waiting for the other person to say it before I can. Account 8. My best friend wanted to cheer me up one weekend because I had found out my boyfriend of four years had gotten engaged to the girl he was cheating on me with, a month after we broke up. I got to her house, where I thought we would play Mario Kart, watch horrible videos on YouTube, and eat pizza rolls like we always did. But when I got there, her boyfriend was occupying my spot. I have a specific spot on her bed that I always sit in and no one else. I sat on the computer chair and had nothing to do but sit there and listen to them make out all night. Yeah, they do a great job cheering up, and they do this shit all the time. She will flake out on plans we made with one of our other girlfriends, or she just won't answer her phone. Once I was stuck in another city with another friend of mine. We didn't have enough money for the bus and were texting everyone we knew who had access to a car. I texted her around 3 in the afternoon, asking her if her boyfriend could get the car and come get us. No reply, ever. A few weeks later, it came up in a conversation and she said, Oh yeah, I got that text around 7. I could tell it was a lie. And well, I figured it had been a few hours and you probably figured it out. So I just pretended I didn't get it and didn't reply, lol. She could have at least texted me to make sure I did in fact get home all right. BTW, I was stranded there until 9 o'clock. She also makes me be the one to contact our other girlfriend to be the one who has to tell her we can't make it to her house or whatever the plans were. Account 9. Best friends with this girl since 7th grade. She was much prettier, cooler, yada yada. We live close to each other, hang out all the time. I even go on a trip to Mexico with her and her mom. I am practically a member of her family. Freshman year, I get really busy doing a play and don't see much of her for a couple of months. Come to find out, she'd been drunk at school nearly every day during that time, and was apparently stealing her mom's Xanax and other meds, too, along with some sexy times with her older boyfriend, which really pissed off her dad. Her parents sort of overreact and send her to a short Lil rehab program. While she is there, I babysat her little sister so her parents could go to counseling with her. I hung out with her mom and listened to her probs, wrote the girl a heartfelt letter of support, Doc's apology for not being there when she was having problems or whatever. I was the only friend she's still allowed to talk to all summer. Got in huge blowout fights with my mom who didn't like me being friends with someone who did drugs. Little did she know I was just as bad first day of school, I walk up and say, hey, because you generally greet your friends and she gave me the most epic stank face she could muster and walked away. 
This was also the first time she had indicated that anything was wrong with our friendship at all, because after she got out of the program, we hung out all the frickin' time and had a blasty blast. There were always weird situations where she would use me, and I suppose I should have realized that she was only my friend because she knew she could get me to do whatever she wanted. One time she asked me to babysit her sister so that she could hang out with our other close friend without me. I did it. We literally never spoke again until junior year when she had a crush on a guy friend of mine who I ended up dating and tried to be friends with me again to learn more about him. Her little sister still called me for a while and wanted to hang out because she missed me. Classic example of how one person can be totally invested in a friendship and the other person could give less than a shit. TLDR best friend ditched me for cooler friends on first day of school, even though I was her only correspondence from rehab. Count 10. Okay, this is an easy one because it just happened three days ago. I called my friend of 17 years a few days ago and asked him to give me a ride to go get my car which was parked 20 blocks away, so I wouldn't miss my parents' anniversary dinner. He responded, That's not that far. I'm watching TV. So I asked, surprised, if he really wouldn't give me this five-minute ride. And he just grunted. Not even words. Just a grunt. So I walked for half an hour, got my car, and got to the restaurant 30 minutes late and drenched in sweat. Account 11. Pretty simple. Didn't come to my dad's funeral because he had to run errands. My dad passed away in 2009, about a month after I graduated college. I called a friend who I was extremely close with throughout elementary school and high school, who my dad viewed as another son. We lost touch a bit about halfway through my college years, but when my dad passed, he was one of the first people I called because I thought he had the right to know. I'd found my dad on Monday, June 15, 2009. The service was the following Sunday, Father's Day. Said friend called me in the middle of the scheduled service to tell me that he had to run errands and get groceries so he couldn't make it. A girl I had some history with in school drove five hours to be there for me. He couldn't drive five minutes. Haven't talked to the guy since. Account 12. Stupid bitch pretended to be my friend, sat at my table complaining about her husband, would listen to me complain about my husband, then go tell my husband lies, saying I'd said I didn't want to be married anymore, that I wanted to go lesbo, that I would let the two of them get together. She convinced him, although it probably didn't take much, and ended up having an affair with him. All the while insisting that she was my friend. With friends like that, who needs enemas? Seriously. I have no respect for anybody who will knowingly mess around with a married person. Account 13. I was always the party planner in the group. Parties, picnics, clubbing. I set a date and everyone came. My husband then fiancé moved away, long distance, though still got married half a year later in our hometown. We invited all the old gang from high school and new friends from university. All attended. It was a great day. We were married outside. I got swarmed for conversation before our photos. We both made the rounds and spoke to each guest at least twice, our generation more due to the bar, dance floor, and staying late. Great day. Off we go for our honeymoon. I returned home to an email from Jane. She sent it the day after our wedding. Big ass rant about how she was so hurt because I promised Bob would be there and he didn't attend. I also didn't set her up with any men and didn't hang out with her like we used to. I never called and I was always a bitch to her. Plus I had to keep leaving her during conversation to do cake cutting, garter toss, etc. And how could I do that? Ern, it was our wedding. I can't babysit or play matchmaker. I actually thought we were good friends and was surprised. I emailed back to see if there were any issues that I wasn't aware of, and it came down to me somehow not playing host well enough at our wedding and never calling her. Maybe there will be another post here about some bitch bride that couldn't be bothered to set Jane up with a guy or babysit her all night. Account 14. I worked in the residence halls in college, so you live and work with your friends. I hung out with this guy every day. We stayed up late at night having deep conversations, watched movies, would keep each other company at work, even if one of us was off, and most importantly, I was always his shoulder to cry on because he was having a rough year. Towards the end of the year, I found out a secret he'd been keeping from me, which was kind of understandable, but still not super encouraging. People need their secrets. However, I graduated first and moved off campus. The only time I ever saw him was when I walked 40 men up to campus the next academic year 
He never drove the seven men to my house to hang out, despite saying over and over that he would. I stopped communicating with him because I don't find one-sided friendships enjoyable. Anytime he wants to talk to me, it is so I can be his shoulder to cry on. But when he wants to go out and have fun, he goes out with really shallow people. Often they are the ones who cause his life drama in the first place. I haven't talked to him in months, and he just sent me a request to write him a LinkedIn recommendation. Yeah, I don't think I will do that. Account 15. A friend of my husband's and mine, but they went to high school together. Few weeks before our wedding, we asked him to help us move my mother-in-law move into her new house because we were having the wedding there. Friend said sure. Also said told me he'd be throwing the bachelor party for my husband, who doesn't have many close friends. And I was worried about this, but very grateful and relieved that the friend offered. Week of the move. He's on Facebook pleading for someone to go with him to a fucking NASCAR race that is being held on the day of the move. We confront him about it, asking to confirm whether or not he's helping with the move. He gives us these wishy-washy answers like, sure, if he's not busy, he'll help, even though he already said he would. So we're like, dude, that's mean, but whatever, and he flips, tells us to fuck off and have a nice wedding. No bachelor party, no contact since then. I'm still bitter about this cause I thought that was as nasty as you can get. And his brother owed my husband 60. Fuck you, Matt. And your brother, Sean. I hope you have a shitty life and that whatever NASCAR driver you root for always loses. Account 1. Drove him to job interview after job interview. Took off days from work in order to do so. Gave. Not lent him money to buy some business casual dress wear. He gets the job. Quits three months later. This would have been the ideal job for his knowledge base, had full benefits, and in five years, he would have been promoted to top dog at a stupidly high salary, making nearly double what I make. His reason for quitting was that his boss was kind of annoying. Helped him when cash was tight, gave him computer equipment, helped him get to college when his car was busted, fixed his car. Helped his mom out with household chores. Helped watch out after his sister, drove and picked him and his mom from the airport at 3 a.m. when their ride never showed. They were family to me. Anywho pulled a scumbag Steve on me. Promised to come over after I spent a week in the hospital. Was scared and just wanted a buddy to have a beer with and chat. Never happened. We rescheduled three times. Each time, no call. Then he stopped answering my phone calls. Maybe once every week or so, we had spent nine years hanging out nearly every other day. I sent him an email expressing my hurt that he was a brother to me. Got a reply back? Account 2. First timer that's been lurking for a few months. I saw this thread and had to get this off of my chest. My best friend and I had been through hell and back. We've known each other for 25 plus years and have seen each other through the best and worst in each other's lives. I was his best man at his wedding and he at mine. All of the times that he hit rock bottom, I was there without hesitation, without judgment, but with a hand to help him up and a shoulder to lean on. Four years ago, I was injured while on the job. Due to the nature of the injury, I had a lot of pain and some psychological issues as well. I was assaulted by a patient in an ER. About three months into a severe downward spiral, I got extremely suicidal. It scared the absolute shit out of me and got to the point where I didn't want to go into my house for fear that I'd grab my shotgun and use my brains for wallpaper. Not knowing what else to do, I called my friend and asked him to come get my shotgun from me. I explained to him very clearly everything that was going on and he agreed that the gun shouldn't be anywhere near me. He then asked if he could borrow my pickup as he and his wife were moving into a new house. Since I couldn't drive it, I told him to keep it as long as he needed. He came and got the gun, placed it behind the seat of the truck, and headed out. A week later, he brought the truck back. I was still out of work, hadn't seen anyone for days, and was really looking for a few minutes of conversation. He told me he had to split and took off. After he left, I thought to myself, I wonder if he remembered to get the shotgun out of the truck. When I flipped the seat forward, there was my Winchester, along with the boxes of ammo he'd also grabbed. I went immediately to the phone and dialed up my friend to ask why the gun was still in the truck. He laughed. He thought that I wouldn't think to look for the gun. Account 3. Doesn't compare to some of these stories, but I'll certainly never forget it. Near the end of my senior year of high school, my dad was given four free tickets to a Cubs game, and they were really good seats like third base, eighth row up. He then gave me the tickets sort of as a graduation present, so I invited my three oldest friends. 
The day before, I had them at my house and we went over how we were going to leave at around 9 in the morning to get up for the noon game. So the morning came and none of them were answering their phones. I drove over to one person's house and his mom said he was at the other guy's house. Drove there, his mom said he was at the first house. I was so mad that my friends were blowing me off when they knew how excited I was. I immediately drove to a different friend's house and invited him to go on the spot. The day still turned out to be decent since we ended up scalping the other two tickets to some cool guys that bought us beer, and we got pretty drunk off our profits. But I still can't get over the fact my oldest, best friends would do that to me. Account 4. So we used to joke all the time about, friends will help you move, real friends will help you move bodies, and I thought we were at that level. Then one day some shit went down and I called him up and said I needed help moving and he said sure he'd come over. So he gets there and I show him the body I needed to move, another whole story there, and he kind of freaks and says he needs to call the cops. And so, shit, now I have to move two bodies and still have nobody I can call. Account 5. Most of these posts come down to one thing. Everyone you know has a different view of your relationships than you do. Yeah, that hurts. But the same is likely true for them. How many people consider you to be a great friend, but you barely would acknowledge them? How many people do you sideline? Who would be hurt to learn how little they mean to you? Ultimate rule in life, be nice, man. Be nice. Account six. My roommate and I were very close my first year in graduate school. We started drifting apart when I got involved with my then boyfriend. Roommate was male, I'm female. When it came time for us to move out, I had to attend a conference in Toronto, but he offered to move my already packaged stuff to my boyfriend's. I returned home to find tons of messages from our landlady demanding that I move. He didn't move any of my things, even though he promised to. Additionally, he wrote a nasty letter to her, which he cc'd to me on our apartment door. Basically, I was using him, and he complained about me, despite him promising he'd help me. We haven't spoken since. Account 7. I was best friends with a girl for 10 years. We hung out pretty much every day, were the inseparable twosome, etc, etc. Well, senior year of high school, she meets a guy and we start to drift a bit. She and I had been quite the party types in school, but this guy was uber Christian and was her first boyfriend. So we, understandably, drift from each other. After about a year, I met up with the two of them and his sister at a concert. She introduces me by saying, this is my name. We used to be best friends. Ouch. Account 8. I was home from college and went out with a buddy of mine. We end up meeting two girls at the bar and go back to their place. The girl I was talking to was engaged or something and went to bed. My buddy ended up hooking up with the girl he was with. So some other girl shows up and I end up just BSing with her. Never hooked up with her and ended up sleeping at their place. So fast forward a couple of weeks later, and another friend of mine calls me drunk, thinking I'm someone else, and proceeds to talk shit on me for about five minutes because I never hooked up with that girl. I pretty much came clean and told him that he called the wrong person, the person he had been insulting for the past five minutes. Hung up the phone and haven't talked to him in seven years. Account 9. Good friend from a previous school was transferring to my current school senior year. I made him come with me to social events against his will and included him in my core group of friends. He started to act douchey around me and make snide douchey comments to me that I took as some kind of joke. Apparently they weren't. So one day he invited himself to my house while my mom was out of town and brought three other people and was insisting that we have a party. I said no, I didn't want to fuck up the house and my mom threatened to kick me out if I had another party. He then proceeded to throw a bitch fit and demand that I invite some girls over for a party. He's big, awkward, goofy, and fat. Never met a girl that thought of him as anything more than a friend. I then said no, so he stormed out of the house with the other guys, leaving me. He ignored me for a week, and then the very next weekend, I heard he threw a party at his mom's house and didn't speak one word of it to me, and no one else told me except one of my friends who went. He tried to keep me out of the loop on everything. To this day, I still don't talk to him. He won't even look me in the eye. I recently found out that his friends only hang out with him because he gets them free alcohol, smokes them up for free, and can throw parties at his house. It makes me so happy when I hear what people actually think of him. Account 10. 
In fourth grade, there was a girl I would hang around with every other day or so, eating lunch and just talking about anything. One day, she invited me to a sleepover at her place. It was a total blast. Her parents took the two of us out to pizza, and we giggled the whole time as we tried passing ice to each other's cups using straws. Then we went back to her place, where we spent all night playing clue board game together. The following Monday, I ran up to her during lunch while she was talking with some other girls from class and told her I had such a great time and was really happy. She pulled me aside and told me never to mention it in front of anyone. She didn't want people to know she was with me. I can still remember how it felt when my heart fell down to my stomach. Account 11. I think I'm going to be the douchey friend. I have three people whom I would call my friends, one of whom is an absolute genius, the other is an amazing singer and pretty damn smart, and the third of whom is one of the best looking guys you'll know, and definitely the nicest with a 90 plus average. We're headed to different schools next year, and I think I'm going to try and lose touch with them. Redditors to whom this happened, it's probably not because they didn't like you. I love my friends, but when I'm around them, I hate myself so much more because when she casually mentions getting a five on the AP exam, I feel so much more stupid for having a C average. When she bursts into gravity, I just want to leave because I know I'll never be able to affect anyone as much as she can with her voice. When we go somewhere together, everyone is always looking at him if they don't know him and saying hi if they do. Most Redditors are great people. I am friends with great people. Being around these great people just teaches me more about how completely subpar I am. Account 12. Though not nearly as grandiose as some of the other posts, but perhaps more relatable, my friend, no longer, was sleeping with my now ex-girlfriend for about the last year of our relationship. When I found out and called him about it, he suggested I read the Bible to find comfort during my time of stress. I can laugh now at how arrogant and misled that advice was. But at the time, considering all that happened, I wanted him to eat that Bible. Account 13. I talked a friend I knew for the last five years out of suicide. A few years later, I fell into depression myself and didn't feel comfortable talking about it with anyone in my family, so I went to him. When I mentioned I had problems, he basically blew me off and called me emo. That day, I realized I really didn't have any friends. I guess I'm on the opposite side of this story and the dick in this case. I met my childhood best friend in second grade and we grew up together. We both had several of the same interests, vivid imaginations, incredible nerds, etc. Simply put, best friends. In high school, my friend, let's call him Tom, started having seizures. After going to the doctor, Tom discovered that he had a brain tumor which needed to be removed surgically. This obviously scared the crap out of me, and to this day I vividly remember sitting on the steps in my parents' house when I heard the news. As a best friend, I tried to be as supportive as possible, and I can honestly say I was in the coming years. More on that in just a bit. Tom went into surgery, and I was there the next day when he woke up. This moment in time, which I wasn't even slightly prepared for, was the most pivotal moment in our relationship. While I saw Tom open his eyes and acknowledge his family and myself around him, it was not my best friend who woke up. As time went on, in many ways, I felt like I didn't even recognize who this person was. A once energetic, spirited, and brilliant human was replaced by a shell of that former person. To be very honest, to this day, I personally feel that my best friend died on that operating table and that I've lost him forever. I do want to note that in no way did I think this was his fault, nor did I blame him. It's just the horribly depressing truth of the situation. High school went on, and we remained best, close friends, but as time went on, I felt less and less close. I mean, we remained very close, hung out all the time, but our relationship began to lose all of its substance. We didn't really have any deep conversations or share things with each other. We watched movies, games, etc., but, and I'll use the word substance again, whatever substance constitutes what makes up a best friend was lacking. Years go on, he continued to have seizures and a second round of tumors. Through a variety of treatments, the tumors were gotten rid of, but he still had off and on seizures. As a result of the tumors and treatments, his short-term memory was pretty much shot to hell, which in part made it difficult to have a close relationship with him. Time keeps turning and we go off to college. We kept in touch for sure, but not that much. It was what it was. In my third year of college, and I'll spare all the details, 
My personal life went to absolute crap as my family imploded, and a variety of other things occurred. These events really messed me up and were tearing me apart. It got to the point that after I graduated, I moved several states away to a new city, completely leaving just about everything behind. This is the part where I feel like the cowardly dick. Part of my decision to run away, if you will, was not talking to Tom about it. We both had moved back to our hometown for a bit and such, and continued to hang out here and there. However, I didn't mention my plan. My family was aware, but I never really told any of my friends. I basically suddenly just left. Over the years, Tom has reached out to me on numerous occasions, which for the most part I've ignored. I did try calling him back once a year or two ago. However, I got his VM. I didn't return his call back to me. I left because I didn't want to be reminded of what I left behind. And although Tom didn't cause any of my personal problems, he was a reminder nonetheless. I've tried to justify to myself that we had grown apart as we grew up as we were different and the surgery had changed him, etc. But to this day, I feel incredibly, incredibly guilty. At this point, it's not even so much the reminder of what I left, but the fact that I feel like such an ass that I can't bear to reach out. So in this case, I'm the dick, as I never told my childhood best friend that I felt we had grown apart and that his medical condition had changed him. I think he was aware, but regardless, to this day, I ignore all of his attempts to contact me. Sorry, this was such a long post, but I've never really talked about this with anyone before I have bits and pieces, but reading this thread reminded me of how I loathe myself for what I did and do. Account 14. Found out that one of my closest friends at school was in a secret relationship with another friend of ours for a full year. She didn't even tell me about it until she decided to break it off with the guy. Over this whole time, she also made up countless lies, and I basically can't trust a single thing she says anymore. She was a bitch. Account 1. I have been friends with this girl for about 13 years. We went through high school together and even managed to be friends as adults. Things got a little weird when my high school BF broke up because he wanted to ask her out. I was cool with it, though, because it was freaking high school. She never talked about the time they spend together, and I never ask because she avoids talking about it so hard. One day she calls me and tells me she needs like $800 because of some medical issues her family is having. I tell her I don't have that, but I did manage to scrape up $400 within a day to give her. I haven't heard from her since. Account 2. My childhood best friend in Russia was a girl. Our families were very close. Moms and dads actually worked with each other. We were in the same class from kindergarten till sixth grade. We spent most of our time playing outside or at our houses together. Most holidays we spent together, I moved away about 11 years ago. When I went back to Russia to visit my grandparents in my hometown about five years ago, we had dinner with her family, but she made some bullshit excuse about having to babysit and literally left after not saying more than a sentence. About three years ago, I went to visit again. She didn't even try to see me. She was gone when we went to have dinner at her family's house. She became incredibly gorgeous. Blonde, athletic, nice tits. About two years ago, my mom told me she got knocked up and they were going to shotgun wed her. When I saw the wedding pictures, she looked so gorgeous, I felt like I had missed out on a great girl. It actually depressed me a little bit. About a year ago, I stumbled on a porn video with her in it. It was definitely her because I recognized the voice in her face. TLDR best childhood friend didn't want to even talk to me. Then she got knocked up and I found her in a porn video. Account 3. My friend started off by stealing a game console of mine and after a year he says, Hey, I'll pay you back. Want to go to this concert? I'll get you a ticket and we'll be square, right? So I agree. And he gets the tickets. He then sold mine for weed, telling me he didn't have the tickets anymore right before we were supposed to leave. Account 4. When I was in second grade, I sat with my best friend on the school bus. For some reason, we were talking about Hitler, and I said Schittler. He told on me, and we weren't allowed to sit together anymore. We were still friends, but I think he hated me and was a Nazi. Account 5. Back in high school, I had an end-of-the-year art project that was worth 30% of my mark. There were three parts to this project, two of which were already done, the third part I was waiting on a friend to help me with. For this part of the project, I wanted my friend to help me compose a beat made strictly from noises heard from my room, clock ticking, fan whirling, etc. 
The plan was he was to make the beat, I was going to rap over it, and I was going to film a video, all of it connecting to the idea of writer's block. I had everything planned a month before. From the video to the lyrics, all I needed was the beat. I asked him a month before if he could help, and he was enthusiastic about it. Two weeks pass. I ask him about the beat, and he says he's working it. Another week passes, still nothing heard from him. Monday comes around, the project is due on Friday. I get to school in the morning and I ask him about the beat. He says, fuck man, I don't want to do it anymore. I remind him that he agreed and that this is part of my final mark and not some stupid little assignment I can fuck off. And he says, yay, but I don't want to do it. We get into an argument and he reams me out in front of everyone, telling me shit like not to yell at him and that I'm being a bitch and gets everyone on his side convinced that I'm the asshole in this situation. I tell him to go fuck himself and stop talking to him for the rest of the week, last week of school. I had to rush a half-assed CD carving idea that I had from months back in an attempt to still complete the project. That part of the project got a barely passing mark while the other two were above 90%. I'm glad I'm not friends with him or the old crew no more. If he couldn't help me with something he agreed to, am I supposed to expect him to help me when I really need it? Account 6. I was in my senior year of high school and had my first real boyfriend. I had really strong feelings for him and ended up going all the way with him after four months of dating. At about five months of dating, I introduced one of my good friends to my boyfriend and my boyfriend's good friend. The four of us started hanging out religiously, doing all sorts of shenanigans together. At about six months into my relationship with my boyfriend, he asked if he could hang out with my friend. Since prom was coming up, I said it was fine thinking he was going to ask her for tips about how to ask me. I think you all see what's coming. Long story short, I had to ask my own boyfriend to prom because he forgot. He and his best friend started hanging out with my friend religiously, without me. My boyfriend and her started hanging out alone more often. I asked him to stop hanging out with her so much, so he dumped me at eight months. A week later, guess who was now officially a couple? Fuck you all. You made me bitter and hostile towards my close friends and guys for months. Account 7. Had his wife, who worked at the credit union I banked at, snoop on my account daily to see how much money I was making at the company we both worked at. I also found out that whenever my name would come up for a promotion or management position, it was his brother's company, he would talk me down and say I wasn't ready for it. I found out only after I quit that he was the reason I saw zero upward movement over two years. Account 8. Once upon a time in college, I fell for this girl who was in my math class. She had quite an abusive childhood, being physically abused by her father and sexually abused by her stepfather. I tried my best to help care for her and treat her like a normal human being. We actually had a pretty normal relationship for a few months. Over Christmas break, I lived off campus and she was an RA so wouldn't have housing. I figured one month with her on board in my big empty house, roommates left for home, wouldn't be the worst. Better than sending her home to be with her messed up family. All was peachy. We had a cute little Christmas celebration and the works. First day of the new semester, radio silence. She tries to alienate my friends in class from me, but they don't really buy the story. She fesses up she likes one of my friends and not me. Realizing life's short, I tell her best of luck. New guy wants nothing to do with her. She spends the next three years calling, texting, emailing, and sending me pictures of my apartment door. I had the misfortune of starting my career in the same town she went to grad school. Eventually, her and her family got into trouble for personal and business tax evasion. It was at that time I remembered before the end of our good times, she didn't file taxes ever because she didn't make any money. Apparently, it was genetic. TLDR, girl I was seeing used me to the point where she wouldn't need me anymore and then dropped me like a sack of potatoes. Stalked me for a bit and then got busted for tax evasion. Account 9. My childhood best and only. I was a dork friend and me reconnected. She was having some rough times, needed a place to stay. I talked to my then roommate, male, and decided she could crash on our couch for a month or two, me paying her one-third plus my one-third, of the rent, utilities, and food. We talk so much the first few nights, she makes me realize that I'm head over heels for my roommate. My first love. So, less than a week after she arrives, she goes to my bedroom to put on a movie to give the two of us some alone time in the living room. She calls me in because she can't figure out how to work the VCR. I go in, set it up for her, and have to watch the opening of a really funny movie. 
Said roommate joins us and we end up sitting on my bed watching it. He ends up fingering her beside me on my bed. Dick move as a roomie, death move as a best friend. I can't believe what I'm seeing. Rage boils over so I take my dog and just leave. I'm gone for two days. No contact with either of them. I had to cool off or I would have hurt her. I come back, she's apologizing and crying. I kick her ass out. Then I have to explain to my roomie why she's leaving. He apologized as well. So years down the road, I've forgiven her. Dumbass me wasn't quite jaded yet, and she's living a few hours away. She sets me up on a date with a good buddy of hers who lives near me. She proceeds to tell him that I'm a nympho when in a committed relationship. Hell yeah, but I don't fuck randoms. Long story short, he rapes me. On her FB, she's still friends with him, knowing what he did to me. He admitted it all, too, although he called it a misunderstanding. Yeah. I said no. You thought I meant yes. Big fucking misunderstanding. Now I'm nicely jaded and don't speak to her anymore. TLDR, childhood BFF, fooled around with my first love beside me on my bed, then set me up with a friend of hers that raped me. Account 10. Maybe I'll sound a little depressed, but I recently found out I don't have any girlfriends. My former friends and I had been a little group since the 7th grade, almost 12 years now, and we would always go everywhere together. One of those girls, we were 11 girls, was my former best friend, and we went through a lot together. I was there for her when her sisters beat the crap out of her. I would stand for her when guys talked trash about her. I was there for her in depressions. I was there taking care of her when she got insanely drunk. I went to pick her up when she decided it was a good idea to jump into some stranger's car she had met in a bar and drive with him down the highway. I was always there. Then, back in 2005, I had a boyfriend and were together for two years until we broke up in August 2007, but stopped going out until I found out he was cheating on me with some random girl in early 2008. As any girl would do, I went to my best friend to tell her everything. I acted as I would have always acted with her, and then I find out second-handed by some other not-really-close friend that my best friend was dating my former boyfriend, and she was the random girl my boyfriend cheated with. I tried talking to her, telling her how much it hurt seeing him around and that I was not feeling comfortable with that. Then she started talking shit about me and about everything I ever told her to our other friends. At the end, I was an evil bitch because I disapproved of that relationship. The rest of the girls sided with her, except three of them who are still my friends, and saw the wrongfulness in the whole situation, and they started trying to trash me with all of our other random friends. Anyway, this was really a strange time in my life, because we were no longer high schoolers to begin with. My boyfriend cheated on me with my best friend. My best friend turned the thing around saying I was a whore and a bitch. And I have to say I have never fully understood the whole situation. When all this happened and I told her I was not comfortable having him around all the time, I just ditched. I mean, I wasn't going to hang around watching them try to hurt me. So, out of a group of 11 friends, we're split into a tiny group of four Redditors and a group of seven cunts. All because some girl rather have a used dick than a true friend. As an update, earlier this year she called me because she wanted us to be like we used to. I told her she was just some random stranger to me. Account 11. Had a buddy I knew since we were really little. Our families still do stuff together, but I didn't see him until I was about 16, 17, different schools, etc. We started hanging out, smoking trees, making music together, going to parties and whatnot. His parents are pretty rich, but always treated him like shit, so I would feed him and give him rides and whatever. One year, I got tickets for a comedy show for my birthday, and I called him up if he wanted to go with me. He kept saying like he'd love to, but that he had to shovel some sand in his dad's garden and wouldn't be finished for a while. So dumbass that I am, I drove over to his house prepared to help him finish early so we could go. I arrive and his mom tells me that he just took off with his friends to go to a street festival in the next town, 15-20 minutes on foot. I drive to the next town and funny enough, there he is with his clique of bros, all weird-ass thug urban gangsters, walking towards the festival. I take a turn literally two feet in front of him and nearly run him over. He doesn't even notice. Needless to say, I didn't go to the comedy show. I spent my birthday present driving around in the car crying about what an asshole he was and how I fell for it. Didn't speak to him until about a year after that when I had cleaned up my act and just wanted to see how he was doing. 
I drove over to his house and he's snorting coke with two petty criminals literally ten feet across the hall from his dad, owner of a private security company. I stuck around for about ten minutes and then made some reason up I had to go. He later married a chick he met while doing coke, had a kid with her, and now lives in a permanent rehab facility. Never regretted cutting ties with him, and whenever my parents try to tell me about him, I just shrug my shoulders and go, so fucking what? Still hurts, though. Actually, I could have known for a while, I guess, since whenever he was at my house, he would ask me for food and ingest incredible amounts of my candy and other snacks. Then one day, we were at his house having a little tree-smoking session, and I asked him if he had anything to eat. He said, no, nah, man, we've got nothing. About half an hour later, I went into the basement to grab some drinks he had put in the freezer and look what's here. Stuffed full of pizzas and fries and whatever you can imagine, but apparently I wasn't good enough of a friend to offer me anything. I confronted him, but he made some shit up that he was not allowed to eat any of the food in his own house. Lying bastard, rot in hell. Count 12. Basically, I had no friends growing up, so I took these especially rough. One kid I was friends with for a few years in elementary school, out of the blue was telling me shit like how at least his brother could talk. My brother is severely mentally handicapped. He has tuberous sclerosis, which results in a host of secondary conditions like autism and epilepsy, and he's nonverbal. Yeah, that sucked. Later, when I was in high school, a guy I'd been friends with since I was a little kid basically just stopped returning my calls. My mother said she saw his dad at some point, and he made some super sarcastic comment about being surprised I didn't go to Harvard or something like that. People suck. Account 13. I was in a band with some friends a while back. During Christmas of one year, my sister and I got a $150 each from our mom. We immediately decided that we'd use the money to buy our mother a plane ticket back to her home state to see her dad, whose health is deteriorating from Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. I was really excited about the plan we had come up with, because my mom is the type of person who works hard and deserves a break like this once in a while, so I told a couple of my bandmates, one of which was living with me at the time, and then put the money in my wallet. The next day, I had a trip planned to go to Gatlinburg with a youth group, and I couldn't find my wallet anywhere. I told my mom that I couldn't find it, and the money she gave me the day before was in it, which really upset me because I wasn't going to be able to fulfill the plan my sister and I had come up with. I still hadn't found my wallet for several months until one day I was hanging out with Roy, one of my bandmates at my house that night, who I had gotten really close since then, when his brother called. He said he found my wallet while he was cleaning out his brother's room. I assumed the worst at first, but I gave him the benefit of the doubt and decided that it was possible that I could have accidentally left my wallet over there at some point. We rode over there together. The entire time he was acting really awkward and strange when I would bring up that I was happy to have my wallet back. When we got there, surprise, there was no money in my wallet. He also took a bunch of my clothes and broke both of my Xbox 360 headsets. TLDR... Friends stole Christmas money from me that I was going to spend on something really important. Account 14. My roommates told me that they're not renewing the lease and that we all should look for a new place to live. I've just come to find out that the rest of them are renewing the lease and that I'm explicitly not allowed to sign the new contract. They're of the opinion that this changes nothing, because I was already looking for a place, even though I can barely afford the split rent as it is. Account 15. I had a friend of about 10 years, and we were pretty close. Spent a lot of time together, partied, and talked about anything. He's notoriously flirty with our other friend's girlfriends. About five months ago, he was blatantly hitting on one of our other friend's girl, so I called him out about it. I was supremely drunk at the time, so I was being kind of an asshole toward him. I raged at him for being untrustworthy because of all of the times this has happened. This was not the first. For a while, there was bitterness between us. I apologize for being an asshole, but made it clear that my point still stands. Things got pretty much back to normal with us, but he'd been carrying around a chip on his shoulder. In the meantime, I started seeing a girl. It was nothing serious, but we were fornicating, so you could call her mine, at least as far as my friends are concerned. Then a little while ago, we got in a significant fight in a bar. I am usually a very happy drunk, swear. The whole time, he was talking to her about it, consoling her. The fight pretty much ended our potential for a future, which I was completely fine with. However, the very next day, douche friend was texting her all night while I was at work. She ended up inviting him out to a party. 
They left together and she stayed with him in his bed. I'd never been so fucking mad in my life. Account 1. This happens to me all the time. I certainly accept the fact that I may play a major part in this, because it couldn't be a coincidence that this exact situation has happened to me at least five times in my 24 years. I was hanging out a lot with a group of older guys, all in their late 30s, early 40s, who I met through my girlfriend's sister. I love sports, so I would often go over to their houses to watch the games with them and their girlfriend's wives. There were two I was particularly close with, and we would go play pool, see movies, drink beer at least a couple of times a week. I helped one of them move when his wife divorced him. I drove the other to the airport more times than I can count. They were great to me and helped me out many times as well. Flash forward to a recent holiday when we were all out drinking. My girlfriend is suddenly acting aloof and angry with me. Turns out another guy in the group had told her that I had had sex with her brother and the other guy. I've never so much as kissed them. This happens so often to me. It sucks. I thought I had a really great friendship with these guys, and here they are, telling everyone in the group they've slept with me. Account 2. I thought I was close friends with a guy from high school and college. I talked him out of going after Tail while he was in a committed relationship. I got him to date said girl. We were friends for five plus years. They're married now, and I didn't even get invited to the wedding. If I was any more bitter, I'd wish them divorce. Account 3. The group of friends I had in high school were really tight and we all hung out together. I was sort of part of two groups of friends, but I considered these people my really close friends. They came up with this stupid name for themselves. They called themselves the Sexy Six. I wasn't included as part of this. About a year and a half later, my best friend, who was considered a part of the Sexy Six, was upset about something that had happened in the group. I think they had a get-together and didn't invite her. I said, yeah, that's got to be hard. I'm a little upset about it, too. I remember her saying, well, it's not like you're actually a part of the group. I was so upset after that, I stopped hanging out with them. Account 4. I was invited to go backpacking for two months with my one friend. I thought it would be a jolly good time, us traveling everywhere together. I get there, and she tells me I need to find my own hostel because I can't stay with her family. This was for my initial four days in Paris. After that, I thought surely we will travel together and be inseparable. Nope. She just wanted to stay in countries where she could stay for free with her acquaintances, and she wanted to stay at these places for weeks at a time. I ended up traveling all by myself for 90% of the trip, meeting her every once in a while. Mind you, I had never been anywhere alone before. She ditched me numerous times on that same trip. And when we went to where my family is from, Italy, I let her stay with both sides of my family. The weird thing is, she considers me one of her closest, bestest friends. Like for real, this is what she tells others in her life. It confuses the shit out of me. Account 5. My best friend of 14 years fucked the guy I was dating the day before my dad's wedding in my bathroom, while I had extended family and friends staying over. He kissed me in front of everyone and said he'd be right up to bed, but I woke up the morning of the wedding and they were both gone, so I drove to his place and proceeded to bust in on them getting dressed. She then said I run through guys all the time and I can't be mad because me and him weren't serious, which is not true. We fucked four times that day because we took the weekend off together for the wedding and he didn't even shower before he fucked her. Her two daughters are my goddaughters and our families have been friends for years, and I have no idea what the fuck they were thinking. I had to come home to my out-of-town cousins, brother, and two close friends and tell them what happened. It was the second time they met. They are both off the list. This was yesterday. I had a great day with my friends and family, though, and the wedding was a blast. Account 6. At that time, my friend had a lot of problems with her family. She was often sleeping at my apartment, using my things, eating my food. I even bought her a mattress so she can have a good night's sleep. I never even thought to ask her any money for that. I was just glad I could help. One day at college, I forgot my purse at home and had nothing to eat for breakfast. I borrowed from that friend and only bought a $1 muffin. The next day, first thing she says to me in class, Hey, can I have my money back? Account 7. My maid of honor, best friend since middle school, and a number of our mutual friends left our wedding reception with her after an hour to go see a local high school youth group band play. 
She had also not opened her invitation or been responsive to calls or emails regarding planning for the wedding, so maybe I should be shocked she even showed up. Moving out of state for college a few months before moved me out of her priorities list, I suppose. Account 8. Friend of mine talked my ear off all the time about how my new girlfriend was doing me bogus behind my back or hanging on other guys, etc. I let this get to me because I trusted this friend and me, and the girl broke up a month or so into it. One week later, guess who goes for this girl? He even had the nerve to ask my permission, but he was really just flaunting it in my face. Not gonna lie about some outrageous revenge story now so common on here, but I completely cut ties and warned him we would have serious trouble if he intentionally crossed my path again. Count nine. Girl I had a vague crush on in HS met me at the 10th year reunion. We hit it off and start dating. She introduces me to her friend on the other side of the country one day and we become pen pals. Over three months, she got more and more jealous of the pen pal thing to the point where she gave me an ultimatum, her or the friend. I chose neither and walked away. Of course, a few months later, the friend contacted me again. We hit it off and the next thing you know, we were dating, ah, youth. I moved across the country to have a stab at it, got married, had a son, got divorced, and moved back. All told, I'm gone half a decade. When I get back, I find out that first girl told everyone in our grad class I was cheating on her with the friend, that I got her pregnant. When I found out she was pregnant, I left her hanging, and she was forced to go get an abortion on her own dime. Of course, this traumatized her because a year prior, she had lost a baby to SIDS with her last boyfriend. All of it was a total lie because we never once had sex. For that lie, I was physically assaulted twice by male friends of hers and lost every last friend I had in my grad class. Account 10. This may be too far down in the comments for anyone to notice, but this happened recently and I'm still in shock. I was playing some beer pong against my roommate and another one of my good friends. We were what I would consider pretty close. Close enough for my family to include him on a trip to New Orleans free of charge. Well, they were pretty drunk and were doing our normal shit talking during beer pong, to which I was responding with my own shit talking. Well, I eventually won the game and left the room to go smoke. I was then being called back into the pong room to play again. As soon as I walked in, my friend that I had beaten in pong completely blindsided me with a cheap shot punch right to the left side of my jaw was at the ER till five in the morning getting stitches. Haven't talked to him since. TLDR. Good friend whom I took to New Orleans punched me in the face over a game of beer pong. Account 11. I was defending my one white friend, relevant in middle school because all the kids made jokes about him and called him names behind his back. Then one day he makes a racial slur against my culture and someone asks, wow, isn't my name the same race? How can you talk about your best friend like that? friend. What? He's not my best friend. We're not even that close. All while I was walking right next to him. Account 12. I knew I had been growing apart from my group of friends for a while. We were in eighth grade and I guess I was only still friends with them because I didn't really have any other options, small school. Anyways, the birthday of the girl I considered to be my best friend, I knew she was closer to some of the other girls, but I was closest to her, was coming up. We were all eating lunch together and they were talking about planning her party. One of the girls read off a list she described as the perfect invite list. Lo and behold, my name wasn't said. One of them awkwardly said, what about my name? And I was invited. The party was nearing and I was excited that I had actually been included to do something with my group of friends. I had heard some people talking about how they didn't know if it was going to happen that day anymore, but I figured they would have told me a new day not to go there. I was mistaken. I never heard anything about any other party. After that incident, I decided I would rather walk around by myself and chill with the math teacher instead of putting up with those fake girls for the rest of middle school. Bitch missed out on these tight-ass candles. 13. One of my closest friends I've known since middle school, going on almost 20 years, didn't invite me to his wedding. I had to find out about it from friend B who asked me one day if I was going to So-and-So's wedding. 
I've known so and so far longer than friend B, so even he was completely dumbfounded when I said so and so never invited me. I think so and so intends to keep this a secret from me, which is really dumb BTW, but I just haven't had the heart to confront him about it. I just don't have the words to say or ask him WTF is up with him. Even telling me why I wasn't invited would have been enough. I feel let down and depressed about the whole thing. The wedding was in March, and it's having a bigger effect on me than I had expected. Account 14. A friend from high school who I kept in touch with via letters said he'd be coming down and would visit me. He was in Vermont, me and Pensy. So I sat out on the porch of the house I was sharing with others, looking forward to seeing someone I knew. I sat there for four hours. Nothing. I was poor but had bought a six-pack of beer to share. When I wrote him to ask him why he didn't show, he said that he had stopped by to visit someone else he knew and was having fun there. That was the last time we ever spoke or wrote. Account 15. My 18th birthday party. All my life I had wanted a surprise party and my parents finally paired up with my best friend to host one for me. It was awesome. They invited everyone in my group of friends to show up. Unfortunately, no one did. They all canceled the day of. So I showed up to a house decorated for a party with lots of food and only about four people out of 15. I still get misty-eyed and sad thinking about it because I considered those people to be really good friends. Found out I was wrong. 